All right, good morning, everyone. I hope all of you can hear me. Uh, I can see Fatiha in the screen. <laughs> I think Mr. PC will be uh, already here or he will be come back soon. I hope um, uh, I will in a few minutes. Uh, okay. So, um, today, um, what we'll do, we'll have a um, guest lecture, okay, um, Mr. Prasan Chandra, or uh, PC, uh, from uh, Team Media, okay, so I uh, especially invite him to share his experience um, to, uh, you know, to, with you, how um, his company or he himself and his company uh, using um, digital platforms okay, to uh, give more updated, more current news about tourism industry. Okay, that's the reason why I asked um, him uh, especially to uh, to come to come in uh, and give a um, lecture um, for this uh, subject. Okay, to reason it <laughs> Sorry, I'll be keep uh, uh, alternating, but uh, the guest lecture today will be conducted in English. Uh, so don't worry. Uh, but you can ask your question in English or Malay. I will be um, reading from the chat. Uh, okay. So I, I think we'll uh, we'll wait for him um, in a bit. So from someone, I hope you can learn a lot from him. Uh, from someone who is, uh, who has a lot of uh, experience. If he, you look into um, his profile. Uh, you can, you know, you can see that he has a lot of uh, experience in uh, travel industry in multinational company. Okay, so I know a lot of you are aiming uh, to work um, in tour agency, uh, in travel um, uh, travel agency. So I hope um, he's he can share a lot with you what what he did in the past and also what what he's doing now. Um, so that you can learn a lot uh, from him, okay. So I hope you have questions uh, from him. So if you see uh, his uh, profile, um, he worked uh, in uh, mice. Um, he did, he did uh, work uh, in the mice industry. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Not really nervous. Uh, I haven't spoken in fully English for a long time because I always speak with you uh, uh, mix, uh, you know, in Malay and English. If, if you realize. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm just talking to oh, my yeah. students because they, they send messages through chat. <laughs> that's usually what um, I, I do during uh, uh, um lecture <laughs> all right so i will be also reading comments and ask you my question i have a lot of questions to you that, that i sent uh okay <laughs> because i'm worried that uh this is my first time inviting uh someone from not really physically uh here in Klantan, you know because we are based in Klantan. so thank you right. for joining us today uh, uh, so we are um, uh, from the Faculty of Hospitality, Tourism and Wellness. Uh, this is our fourth year actually. We are quite new. So we started in 2016 as a faculty. So uh, the students that we are having today is, um, you know, from final year students who are taking current issue in tourism. So uh, that's the reason why I invite you today because um, because of, you know, COVID-19 have changed how we interact with each other so much and digital platform is becoming more, more important. So I myself a digital me media researcher. So last time, you know, when, when I started my PhD eight years ago, when I talk about digital media, I get responses that digital media is not relevant. Social media, you know, it's not important. We still need face-to-face -face marketing, but of 
of course, I acknowledge that the importance of uh, digital media, sorry, face-to-face uh, -face marketing. But I also think that social media, we can build our uh, brand, our image, you know, even our own uh, self, project ourselves in social media. And now after COVID-19, suddenly it's a boom of, you know, content, creating new contents. People who don't uh, do not know how to use um, vir uh, like virtual presentation like this one, they have st started to give lectures online. So this semester, I I studied how to do online the way YouTuber does their content because my students complain that my lecture usually take so long <laughs> for them to digest, and my content usually very heavy content because I like to share what I did, what I know, you know. So this semester I started to study how uh, YouTuber does their content to make the content more engaging. So that's the reason why I th when, when I think about content, I remember I saw you with Prof Salahuddin in July uh, this year about food tourism. I, because um, Prof Salahuddin was my master's supervisor, so, so I watched that lecture and then I think of you when I think about, you know, digital media because I think what is in media, this is my first time hearing about this. But when I, you know, that's that's the uh, I start, the reason why I started to follow your profile on LinkedIn, you know, because Prof Azizi, our NC is very active on um, LinkedIn. So I said, no, just give it a try. Just send a message. Let's see whether he wants to respond it or not. And then you did. <laughs> because I just sent the message what, like, last week, right? It took, yeah, it took me a while to get respond from the faculty to give a go, you know, because that's the way we, we do things here. But thank you for coming today. Um, you know, probably I let you introduce yourself. Um, uh, 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 yourself because i think you you introduce yourself better than me okay but thank you very much so uh probably you would like to share like how you started in tourism you know about how uh you uh, motivated to do you know tourism because a lot of fresh graduate nowadays they not sure what they want to do with their career that's if you ask them what they want to do, no, I don't know. So probably you can share how, how you get started in the industry. Yeah. All right. Uh, so thank you, Alia. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's uh, let's make it as a conversation and a lecture here. You know? <laughs> yes. uh, everybody can you know like ask me questions. You know, so don't uh, you know hesitate if you have anything in your mind. You can just type it down, right? So basically, uh, my name is Prashant Chandra. You can call me PC. So I've been in the Malaysian tourism industry for the last 15 years. Uh, uh, almost done uh, everything a tour uh, professional can do, uh, right from uh, I started my career uh, back in 2005 in Johor Bahru. Uh, we had our tour operating kind of business. Then we, uh, uh, that was the time, I think 2007 was the Visit Malaysia year, mm. uh, the first campaign they have started. We could see the tourism business, especially for the inbound business, right? Uh, tourists coming into the country. This subsequently increased a lot. Uh, you know, we all had a lot of business, especially from uh, market like India, uh, Middle East. You know, that was the time. Uh, then uh, we uh, definitely moved our base to KL and then we expanded to other Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so since past, like, 2018, I was uh, managing that business. We had about 130 staffs in seven countries. Uh, we used to operate average 5,000 tourists a month uh, into Southeast Asia. So, you know, I was involved in all this association like uh, Mata, Mita, Pata, you know, all this. Uh, you know, Prof. Seller also a Pata member, right? You know, yeah. very much team. In, in yeah, yeah. Things, you know? So, you know, so I could see like, um, of course, uh, when you say Southeast Asia, uh, Malaysia has, uh, Malaysia comes, you know, top five, top three, you know. Mm -hmm. So Malaysia has huge potential, but uh, industry, as you rightly mentioned, right, people, uh, 
are not adopting digital means like if you compare our competitors or neighbors you know so uh, the operators are not going digital right they uh, still think of the old system they are they are very comfortable with what they are doing uh, you know the offline way mm-hmm. so we uh, me and my friend rizal so we thought like, you know why don't we uh, we should uh, have a platform for the tourism industry to interact Mm-hmm. so we thought you know we should so what is that we should do because uh, if you talk about uh, tourism professionals uh, more than 2 million of them you mm-hmm. know you have so many uh, sectors like airlines transportation tour operators mm-hmm. you know meeting planners wedding planners and so many technology companies so we thought you know yes let's have a media platform where we can connect malaysian travel ecosystem into asean you know and also to to india to south china middle east so it was the ideology of mm-hmm. launching a paid b2b platform so we are mm-hmm. not a b2b platform we are a b2b mm-hmm. platform so we so our subscribers readers are people from the industry mm-hmm. right uh, so people from be it a hotel or airlines or you know the people like uh, the staffs you know, the operators Asian makers, you know, they, so we we make sure that we we have the daily updates, analysis, and all that day-to-day basis. What's happening in Malaysia? Mm-hmm. So it's just really getting a lot of feedback. Especially uh, this is really helping uh, us to bring the message out of Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, you know, people from uh, ASEAN country or India, Middle East, they, they didn't know much about what is happening within Malaysia. Mm-hmm. because the, the communication was very limited and uh, you can't really uh, rely on social media news so much because you need to have authenticity on every news mm-hmm. you produce right mm-hmm. so that is how uh, our existence come in picture so people uh, you know we could see a lot of feedback positive feedbacks uh, because we Uh, so we have basically we cover uh, all the all the states here in malaysia mm-hmm. all the news pertaining to all the states mm-hmm. uh, we also have a bm session so you know we also have a lot of uh, indonesian readers and all those people who who, who like to read bm news mm-hmm. so uh, it's pretty much we 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 can see uh, so that's how the platform has created so now this is the first phase we brought everybody into subscribing reading and everything so now we are uh going to phase 2 in more engaging e-commerce and a lot of other things so mm-hmm. so similarly uh, with team media we could uh, see there are uh, now that is a platform and how do we help people right mm-hmm. so business people still want to know there are businesses who never even had a proper website right yeah. uh, they they although they had website but they didn't they didn't know how to, <laughs> use, the know how to use the website yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so so nowadays it's like uh, it's 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 like if if you have a shop mm-hmm. offline, you know, a normal shop, it is something like if you have an online business, you need to have a website. That's your basic address. Mm-hmm. That is where people will see you first. Mm-hmm. You know, read about you first, know what you sell. So that's the first thing. So we thought, okay, uh, we should uh, we should have a service. you know uh, wing for digital services so we started team digital parallelly mm-hmm. so digital is basically to 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 help businesses to, to you know to help them get uh, to have their basic infrastructure of going online mm-hmm. uh, that's what we are pretty much doing yeah. so uh, you know i i can see that you have background in tourism but do you have background in you know journalism media before you started team media Uh, so I, uh, I actually I have this bachelor's degree in tourism management, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, yes, I I am not a journalist, but I am uh, actually I I knew technology from the very first day. I we parallelly had a technology company where we it is uh, since about seven years now. I had a team mm-hmm. uh, of developers, designers. So we used to keep uh, you know coding a lot of uh, uh, softwares for travel industry. You know, we we develop a travel agent B two B booking system. Uh, we also develop a tour operating uh, module like uh, fleet management, right? Uh, customer service management. We we also develop a customer service app. You know, so when the tourist 
uh, arrive in a country, uh, they can pretty much travel, uh, sort of a paperless travel, you know. So all the documents uh, will be on an app and uh, seamlessly connected to all the suppliers, hotels, you know. So even we also had developed uh, meeting uh, registration systems, you know, all this different type of software. So mm -hmm. I had this technology background, so that is uh, it's really healthy. But then, uh, now we have a team, we have an editor, we have a team of uh, reporters, you know. We, so basically they are the ones who basically write news. Mm -hmm. But then I curate it, you know, I help them to put it on the right frame and, you know, so all that thing I do, yeah. yeah. This is uh, also the reason why you, uh, you know, team media started with the hybrid forum? Yeah, so... Yeah. Basically, yes. So when, when uh, you know we, so when you talk about uh, events industry, right? Mm -hmm. I think event industry is because completely... mice, mice was traditionally people have to go to a place, let's say you know, because the students didn't know uh, what is hybrid forum, so I just explain a little bit because I attended the one in the time, no, right. virtually, virtually, yeah, I attended the virtual right. one. Uh, so. A uh, hybrid forum is where uh, you have the panel in person at you know the the uh, event hall, but the attendees uh, is attending the um, forum online. So I think that's uh, you know a, a, a great way to actually connect mice uh, industry, which uh, used to be. Uh, traditionally, you have to be in one place then only is consider uh you know meeting convention uh, events so you know how 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 team media started that idea uh, uh in virtual or hybrid forum yeah um uh, good question uh Alia. so basically like um, you know covid has really as you know like the industry is completely yeah. Yeah. standstill right yeah. uh, even the meeting industry uh, meeting industry is completely affected because it was such a huge industry and uh, mm -hmm. so many people were employed and uh, so many convention centers, meeting spaces are empty mm -hmm. and they are not able to operate. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there's a revolution happening in the event industry at, at this point of time because of COVID. Uh, it was actually virtual events is something which is already existing earlier. Mm -hmm. It was there from the beginning. Yeah. But people was always, uh, you know, they didn't see the benefit of a virtual event as much as they can see now mm -hmm. because the, the, now the situation has put them into, like we are connecting. If we are not having this platform, we would never would have connected, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, so there are so much of uh, convenience such events have brought in, mm -hmm. right? So when uh, the lockdown happened, uh, even we ourselves have uh, cancelled uh, hundreds of events, mm -hmm. even, uh, you know, and uh, we thought, okay, why don't we, you know, try to initiate something which, you know, which with the new norm. So that is how uh, when we had our uh, event in Penang, uh, mm -hmm. we decided to go hybrid. Mm -hmm. So hybrid, the best part of being hybrid is, of course, you also have a physical uh, interaction, yeah. the physical participant, because in tourism you need physical audience, right? Yes, of course. Yeah. Or else it wasn't. Uh, it's not called tourism. People have to travel. Yeah. Yeah. So you know we don't we, we don't go all virtual because you know we need people to come into country, spend money, yeah, spend right? Money, yeah. So um, so I think hybrid is the immediate future of the event industry. Mm -hmm. That is what uh, we could see clearly because hybrid is something which you connect the international crowd who can't physically attend, but at the same time, they are paying to attend your event. Mm -hmm. Because you're, uh, you can be a different uh, structure, you know, I mean, uh, you can charge less for people who are coming online, you know, those kind of things, but then you, you have a revenue, revenue is free. Mm -hmm. At the same time, your event is going international. Uh, mm -hmm. The event is going to 20 countries, you know, you'll have another 500 people joining from different uh, time mm -hmm. zones. So that is something which this is a miracle because uh, mm -hmm. we never realized that this kind of thing is, you know, mm -hmm. so much, it adds so much value to an event. Mm -hmm. Because today, uh, if somebody is watching it uh, from somewhere and he's seeing what is happening in Penang, mm -hmm. next year he will come down. Yep. So that's adding one more, uh, you know, tourist to your event. So mm -hmm. those kind of thing is happening. And then 
uh, I think uh, it's very easy for us to get speakers when you do with yeah, the Bible. Like, like I'm waiting you right now. You don't need to fly yeah. to Kota Baru just you know to give yeah, an hour so lecture. Yeah. Correct. If I had to physically come, you know, I would have like, like come yesterday night. <laughs> I would get some hotel yeah. and you know, all that hassles, you know. Yeah. So uh, you know, now it's like we are actually talking the same way we are talking in the hall, right? Yeah. Uh, only thing is, uh, we all uh, need to understand that uh, it's not much of a difference, you know. We have to involve fully in this, so we have to make sure that there is there is an interaction, yeah. you know. Some people, so the, old, the only uh, you know advice, you know, I always uh, give all, all to all those uh, online uh, viewers is like, you know, don't treat it as an online meeting; it is an offline meeting. Yeah. You know, yeah. be as real as we are in a room. Let's talk. Let's you know, ask Indeed. questions, ask and interact. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's how. Uh, and we have we have planned a couple of more uh, hybrid events. Uh, mm -hmm. Even you know, we have this uh, there's a road show, tourism mm -hmm. road show mm -hmm. to India every year. They do it to Indian market. Right? Mm -hmm. This time uh, it is again going hybrid. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, what they are doing is basically. Uh, a virtual B2B sessions in every zone, mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. North Zone, South Zone. So they will have uh, 200 agents uh, mm -hmm. meeting all the suppliers. And then every day they will have a uh, networking dinner in mm -hmm. that city. Mm -hmm. so, so like all the key decision makers can come for the dinner and have a screen, have an interaction, have seen them, you know, mm -hmm. talking to each other. And so that is those kind of things going on, and which also pretty much impactful when you want to promote your product in a different market which is very much uh, yeah. cost saving also yeah, yeah. yeah. so um that's lead to my next question so how do you convince um b2b players you know to be on board uh especially in the mice industry uh you know to to do this with virtually because i know i know uh, it's um you know the, the reason, uh, the main reason is COVID, but a lot of um, key players, especially still, uh, you know, a traditionalist uh, think, thinker, you know, I and you are quite young, but a lot of, you know, the elder um, players, uh, it's hard for them to switch, um, you know, platforms or to switch the way they engage with uh, people, especially you know, people like us who likes to meet people face to face. That's the reason why we're in the industry in the first place. Yeah. 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 So how, how do you convince them? Yeah, so uh, so the, the, the situation now is uh, if you are uh, not online, uh, you are almost disappeared you know, from the business. So you're, you're, anybody who, of course, it's, uh, it's still a large part of our industry is offline, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are... Uh, trying to educate people about how crucial it is for them to take that first step because you need to start moving uh, mm -hmm. you need to you need to start somewhere you know because mm -hmm. uh, you can't just have an e-commerce site and having revenue from the next day it doesn't happen like that mm -hmm. but uh, they have to start somewhere and uh, they if they are completely out of you know what is happening they need to find help from people who can help them to go online mm -hmm. because otherwise they'll out of business mm -hmm. and we've been you know, people telling people that you know if if you are not if you don't have an online presence if you if people can't find you uh, on the web that mm -hmm. if and if you're still not doing anything maybe in the next five years you will be out of business mm -hmm. yeah. so so they have to do something uh, there's a lot of platforms and today you know it's, it's available for free you know, there are a lot of free tools available, a lot of social media platforms. So I think um, if you look at tourism, tourism uh, industry was actually quite online. If you look at uh, a lot of sectors like, you know, those uh, product sectors, you know, hotels and mm -hmm. they were quite, on, they're quite mm -hmm. online, but the operator side was not online. Mm -hmm. You know the operators and uh, and the and the intermediaries, you know the tour operators, mm -hmm. travel agents, and all these service providers service were providers. still, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not very much online. But then mm -hmm. I think they are still realized because I, if you look at what is happening today, uh, after COVID, the e-commerce companies have their business is still good. Mm -hmm. 
you know, who is losing out is the traditional players who doesn't have a system, who doesn't have a booking platform, mm -hmm. you know, who is still waiting for someone to walk into their office and pay and book and all. They are suffering. Mm -hmm. So, they, this is a great lesson for them that mm -hmm. yes, you know, it is high time to do something about it. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you can't expect miracle overnight, but then somewhere you need to start. I think everyone is uh, realized that and, and you can we can see a lot of interest in you know people are coming up and asking different type of questions on mm -hmm. because the thing is going online is uh, actually changing the whole business process mm -hmm. right they were following process a now you need to follow process b so mm -hmm. that different is is actually uh, there is no ready-made manual for it at this point of time if your business you need to go online it's only you need to sit and have to put it put step by step that okay my business what all i what all component i can put online what all i still have to keep off you know, so that that process people have to sit and do by themselves they can't simply subscribe to one system and say okay now everything is sorted mm -hmm. they will do my work no it doesn't happen like that right? mm -hmm. so yeah so it's it's actually a huge part of the industry is somewhere i think i think uh, this was a great uh, eye opener mm -hmm. yep. you know uh, even uh, from our big secret uh, towns you know people are, people are looking for social media marketing mm -hmm. you know, they need to have a landing page and a basic web page all that things start, start happening we still have inquiries uh, from Tanganyu, you know all these places you know they wanted to have the basic websites and all that so it's a good move mm -hmm. yeah i think the media, uh, you know, presence in digital media is time very timely with you know the current situation and also where we are going post COVID uh, because you provide this solution to B two B businesses before by having a digital platform. I also like the way uh, uh, the fact that you highlight that um, you know soft. Asia market is so large, but we, you know, we even have people who can speak um, Tamil, you know, like so many um, South Indian languages that also actually being speaking, uh, being speak here, but we cannot tap that market, which is quite surprising for me, you know, but I am glad that you highlighted that because that's how um, digital platform can um, actually connect between you know our own market what, what the media is doing um with south asia market which you know can generate billions of tourism dollars ringgit for for us you know so what is the you know if, if you want to start in digital business let's say uh, because the students here are you know fresh graduates uh let's say they want to be a startup you know in digital um, businesses so what what your advice um how what or what is the first step they should take to to start um online business to start digital you know content um centered um you know web page or uh, platforms what what advice do i have for them you know okay so, uh, so it's like this, uh, you know, any startups, any, uh, you know, businesses, uh, the first question in your mind should be, what is that one problem you're going to solve, right? Because if you want to be sustainable in the business, uh, you need to look at problem solving approach. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that one problem which is in your, it can be as small as two biggest problem in your community, in your society, in your day to day life, in your college, in your Whatever, you, any, any, any businesses who are uh, who are basically going out of you know uh, market, and you can see there are so many opportunities in the community. Mm -hmm. So you need to think of what is that one problem you are going to solve. From there, everything starts. So if you have the right idea, mm -hmm. so you need to start. You need to have the right idea to to to, to pitch into you know. The right so but there are, there are so many opportunities there are, there are a lot of opportunities the only thing is uh, you need to basically sit and think and also discuss uh, you know you can probably have uh, you know some sort of a group active grouping among your friends and you can have discussion on various uh, subjects topics you think that you can solve so uh, 
technology wise once you have the idea frame in your mind that okay this is what we have to do and this is what we think how we can do then technology there are a lot of options mm-hmm. there are so many tools right um, so if you know there are so many um, you know if you if you look at uh, a lot of uh, of mdec and all our you know uh, multimedia mm-hmm. departments uh even magic and you know uh incredible a lot of uh, also uh, you know invite uh such brainstorming uh, sessions and you can also uh, you know attend a lot of their workshops so now now it's all online right so it's easy mm-hmm. for you to really listen to how other business uh, you know entrepreneurs or uh, founders you know how they were actually you know thinking at the first stage and then how do they grow that idea into a full fledged business mm-hmm. so i think it's very important for you to have a base so mm-hmm. the base has to be very uh, clear to to have an idea but because if you if you have a solid idea to grow your business on because if you you can't uh, do start doing things and then half of the way you start thinking mm-hmm. about uh, the pros and cons and all it doesn't work mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. so it has to be you know uh, so that is I think we need to identify the problem first, mm-hmm. so that you can work around the problem to build a business. Mm-hmm. So, what right. do you you know uh, predict, or you see the problem that needs solving? Uh, you know, in the next twelve months, probably. See, uh, if you ask me, uh, of course, in tourism industry, uh, a lot of offline work. they are doing mm-hmm. can go online right? a lot of uh, tools a lot of systems which can be built and uh, serve people's requirement right uh, mm-hmm. if you uh, if you look at uh, a lot of uh, like if you look at for example uh, all this otas online travel agents right mm-hmm. they are not yet reached uh, so many local products right because these local products are not having platform to connect with them mm-hmm. they are not they are not yet have a platform mm-hmm. they, they are not uh, present online yet mm-hmm. so the, everybody think of oh, uh, you know it is going to be a cost for me you know i'm a very small operator if i'm going to i don't have that much of money to have a booking system or you know or, or, but there are so many tools available there are so many free tools available there are so many um, so many pl- places where you can seek help If you are, if you have a solid idea to how you can, you know, bring this online and from there where it will go, you know, so you need to have that ideation in your mind mm-hmm. that once you go online, where all you can sell this because if you are on the web, uh, you know, on 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 the web, then you are connecting to the world, right? Anybody can access, anybody can buy it. So how do you move in order to? Basically, make it sellable to multi-region, multi-country. You know that market. Mm-hmm. So it's also very important that mm-hmm. what you sell in a small, uh, you know, a city uh, may not be the same when you sell it to an international mm-hmm. customer. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you need to have that part also fixed, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, so if you have good ideas, there are people who are uh, willing to pick it up and help you. You know, scale. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people there, but then your idea has to be very solid, uh, to be convincing mm-hmm. enough, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, so it's it's. I think you should always look for look for problems. You know, then only you find solutions for that. So, Do you right? think because of you know we have so many languages in Malaysia? Uh, Although it's an advantage, but it's also serve as disadvantage because we do not know what to focus or you know how what is the best language to deliver uh, the message to the consumer. Do you think uh, is that is that a problem? You know, uh, let's say it. let's say you can only speak Malay, but you do not know how many markets that actually uh, Malay language can you know reach. For example, you know? yeah. Uh, you know, if I if I give you an answer from a technology perspective, uh, you just look at uh, go to Google Trends, right, mm-hmm. and see the keywords, uh, the top ten keywords or top fifty keywords uh, on. You know, you can see that. Uh, of course, commonly uh, around the world, searching on English keywords, right? They search uh, even when we also go to search something, yeah, we put English, English keywords. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, I think that is one thing you need to consider because uh, now, especially with COVID, right, the industry has shrunk, become smaller now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, you know, it was, it will take another two, three years to go back to the size uh, we had left before COVID or maybe it, it, it may, you know, it, it may take more longer. Mm-hmm. So now, uh, if I was happy with uh, doing business with Malaysian market, mm-hmm. I may not have that much of business now because the market is, the, the buying power is less mm-hmm. and then, you know, uh, you have more products, more, uh, you know, uh, less customers and more, uh, more you know, uh, sort of a, uh, the supply demand equation is really disturbed by this. Mm-hmm. So I think it's very important for us to go multi-markets. Mm-hmm. You know, so your product has to be to be ready to cater anybody from any region. Mm. So I think uh, in, to start with, uh, English can be a common language, uh, especially, you know, I, I talk about the, the search engine optimization and your Google search and all that. So it happens uh, in keywords. So if you look at keywords, uh, I mean, you, you can just... You can just search the top 10 keywords in Google and see what people are searching every day. And from there, even you can find a lot of ideas for businesses, you know. Yeah. So that is how the pattern works, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So multi-market is, you know, you know where, where we should be um, heading in. Yeah. I also actually advise uh, students to, you know, to be more open to, uh, you know, uh, opportunities rather than limiting for for let's say travel when when you think about um, travel or tour you can only think about travel agency but then there are so many agencies you know we have let's say like team media you know we have uh, a need for travel or tourism students to be in uh, digital or uh, we say uh, news uh, industry you know it's, it's con- it, it's not really a completely different industry it's still the same one but you provide uh, input, you know. So, do you think there's opportunity for you know for students to, you know, to to be in news or journalism or content, even even creating contents on YouTube? Do you think there's opportunity in that? Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, one thing, like uh, you know, if you ask me, uh, all those successful YouTubers, you know. Mm-hmm all those uh, guys who are making money online these days is mm-hmm. somewhere they started as a hobby right so uh, i would uh, you know suggest uh, my advice to all the students will be to find your niche mm-hmm. you know if you are if you are somebody who loves singing you, know, you should start uh, putting up some videos while you sing so you know some of your songs you know if you if you're somebody who really like to write you know you start Start a blog. Mm-hmm. Start a blog because it's you will take some few blogs to reach where people started reading you. Mm-hmm. So you can't judge from the first blog about your subscriber. Hey, I only have ten people. I only fifty people. I don't want to. Do. I, you know, they have one million. I have only one. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. It will. If you look at all the YouTubers or the bloggers, they spend five years, seven years, ten years to reach where they are. Mm-hmm. Right. So. It's it's very important for you to. It's a lot of hard work, right? It is not what you see like oh, I put one blog and it's become viral, and the next morning I have hundred thousand subscribers. Like, it's all <laughs> it's all fake stories. If you're listening it online, it's fake stories. It's right? like they're, one they're in, something in one in ten thousand YouTubers probably you know uh, happen to them. Uh, you know, for me. Okay, so you know those, those there, are, there, are, there are content like this you will see. Hey, you know, I just put this, and then uh, you know, uh, next day when I wake up, I had like you know hundred thousand likes. They are trying to sell something. Yeah. If they really have hundred thousand likes, then they should not doing this. They will keep doing what they are doing, right? So you know, it is it is a gimmick. So basically, uh, I I would suggest you guys that uh, you need to start doing things if you know if you know what is your niche, find your niche. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a writer. There are thousands of subjects you can write on. So you pick up the most um, most important or the most uh, interesting subject where mm-hmm. people would love. To. If you are a reader, you, you have to get from your own perspective. Like if you are a reader, would you read this? Mm-hmm. Would you spend time to read this piece? Then you should start. So see, when you write, you must write from that perspective. Okay, if you are a, if you are somebody who is going to consume that content, are you? 
Are you going to spend time to read this kind of stuff? Or you feel like, oh, after two, three, four lines, you're like, no, just remove and jump to another one. Because, you know, a lot of option. People have a lot of option online. That's the thing. We keep on, you keep on scrolling. Mm-hmm. And you're getting two to three seconds of your eyeballs, you know. So mm-hmm. what is that your niche? So if you are, you know, if you are, uh, uh, you know, if you're a YouTuber, if you, if you think that you can create videos, Right, uh, you can you can do uh, review products, or if you can go to a tourist uh, attraction and do a video which can attract more people into that attraction. So you can try doing that video. So start start doing with your phone. That's okay. Start doing with your phone mm-hmm. and start start uploading it and see what people's reaction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can start with your own community, right? your own friends, your own mm-hmm. college, and then people give you feedbacks. Hey, this is okay, this is nice, you know, and some of the videos it will automatically go well because the content is really good. Yeah. The way that's narrated is very good, mm-hmm. or maybe uh, you know, the, the points mentioned are very good. Mm-hmm. Until if you don't do it, mm-hmm. you won't. Mm-hmm. So, it's very important for you to start doing it. And then, after probably a few videos, down to like 10 videos, 15 videos, if you still want to continue. Mm-hmm. Or you feel like, no, this is not my game and I should do something else. So, until unless you don't reach that level, you don't know what is your niche. So, mm-hmm. that's all. Yeah. 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 So, how, how do you keep people's attention on, you know, your content, your in-media, you know, content? Yeah, so, basically, <laughs> we, uh, normally we have a content calendar. Mm-hmm. So, we basically will have, we plan uh, ahead, uh, a month ahead on what content we should put up. Of course, there are so much, so many news which is uh, very, uh, you know, concurrent news happens. So that, that, that's a session which we feature daily news. But then uh, this content, uh, you know, calendar, which we, we normally have it for various sessions for mice, how much time, how much news we should uh, focus on, you know, for leisure, for cruisers, for airlines, for transport, for technology. So. We have to follow, we have to make sure that we touch all that. Uh, we should not be writing about only one part and we mm-hmm. leave other parts. So I think, yeah, so this is, uh, the planning is also very important because, uh, of course, when you are uh, when you are a media, then you also have certain responsibility, right? Your readers expect uh, you to, to, to have certain uh, quality of content. So uh, that you only get uh, with proper planning, right? Like so I also see that you are very active on LinkedIn, um, you know, because I, I was talking to the students that they should use uh, LinkedIn or, you know, digital platform to promote themselves. So what um, you can share, how, how how do you, you know, do do this? How do you promote yourself on um, LinkedIn on digital platform? You as a person, yeah. not the company. Right. So uh, if you look at, uh, you know, any recruiters, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Any recruiters. If you look at, if you're if you're going to look for, a, for example, for a job, right? any company. Uh, I think. I mean, I normally do that. I first thing I do is I will search. I will search for LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. So I don't look at. I don't look at uh, their uh, resume, uh, right? I will look at LinkedIn. I will judge them from LinkedIn. <laughs> Actually. Mm-hmm. It is, you know, basically, it's 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 it is very important uh, to know that this person, uh, what is that he thinks, what is that he writes, uh, how how he contacts himself online or mm-hmm. herself online. So these are all very important. Uh, LinkedIn is actually a professional network, mm-hmm. uh, definitely, because Facebook and uh, Instagram and all is is more on a, you know, uh, the, the content is uh, it's. it's I mean, of course, in terms of, it's more of personal, uh, you know, it's more, uh, uh, it's not just professional. So, but LinkedIn is a platform which is mm-hmm. only professional. Uh, it, it has built around such a system that uh, people who are basically going to LinkedIn to connect to their colleagues and People from their industry and even search in LinkedIn also design in such a way that you can find people from your industry, mm-hmm. from your region, and you know, so all that. So basically, uh, it's a very good platform. I think you all must have a proper, 
profile mm -hmm. uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, keep updating that. Keep write about what you you love to you know talk, tell the world. Right. Uh, keep keep writing. Keep updating. And uh, I think it's it's very important uh, also to connect, have more friends, add more people in your connections. Mm -hmm. Right. Very very important to add more people in your connections so that it's, it's like it's it's like a parallel uh, world, right? Mm -hmm. You meet them every day, and you read about them, and you sort of uh, build a relationship online. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very helpful, very helpful because I can see uh, a lot of companies who like to post uh, in in LinkedIn mm -hmm. for their uh, job requirement. Even we use LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is also a very uh, effective uh, recruitment uh, service mm -hmm. uh, because you know they are. You know, you get a lot of lot more serious candidates in LinkedIn jobs and things like that. So, I think it's very important for you to have it's not only having a presence, but then to be an active person. That means at least you know once a day you should post something, post something. active, mm -hmm. do the hashtag, use the hashtag properly so that you also come in some search and you know because when recruiters search something, they can even. Your your profile will come in the search, mm -hmm. so they might invite you to you know talk and all that thing. So even for entrepreneurs, you can also use LinkedIn uh, to connect with your clients. You can find leads in LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn is still uh, uh, a platform where you can find leads without paying, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, they are uh, not reach where Facebook and you know, Google has reached. Mm -hmm. So they are still giving a lot of leverage in terms of search you know you still can search people out you know linkedin has a premium mm -hmm. uh, you know feature mm -hmm. so that that's a directly in mail you know you can you can send message to people directly and mm -hmm. all that that's very very uh, you know i think it, those those are very interesting features i think if, if any of you really have you know the ability to write good content or do good content you know put it up on the linkedin mm -hmm. people will find you people will find you yeah, I'm, I'm actually, you know, glad that you highlighted that LinkedIn as LinkedIn jobs because students and fresh graduates, um, you know, did not know there's such a platform. You can actually apply a job on LinkedIn. They only know job street. That's all, that's it. But, you know, when companies posted uh, jobs on LinkedIn, it's much more uh, serious candidate and they don't need to ask for your CV because they can just pull out the CV from your profile. That's what I like about LinkedIn. So, you know, I hope, uh, you know, students have awareness that they can actually apply because they are, they are struggling to apply for internship because of um, how our industry is, you know, you know, like slowly um, uh, going strong again. So they, they are quite struggling in terms of that. So probably you have advice uh, how they can, you know, you know, be more creative in terms of applying internship, applying jobs. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> sorry, if you ask me, right, if you ask me, um, why don't, I mean, why should, uh, why should not you try your capabilities, you know, why don't you try to do something on yours? On your own first before you think of working for somebody else. When I, it's a, it's something which you are all very young. You are just you know finish your college. You still have some buffer time, you know, to try things out. You know, if you you still have some time to take some risk in life to move ahead. Anybody who did great in life who always took risk, and I think this is the right age. You know, I've started my career, I uh, started working when I was 19 years, 20 years. I started working part times in travel agencies and things like that. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, very, it's very good to start early so that you understand a lot about business. Um, understand a lot about that particular business you are involved in. So, I think it's it, it, now, you know, we didn't have this kind of, of online presence or opportunities back then, right? Mm -hmm. So, now you have you know, the world is so small, right? You have, you have, you can even uh, work uh, remotely. You can find opportunities remotely. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important for all of you to, to understand because everyone has some abilities, mm -hmm. but they are not tapping into that. Mm -hmm. Right? They are, you, you need to basically to understand that what is what are you good at. Mm -hmm. 
So if you if you find that the niche, as I earlier mentioned, you can do a you can tap into that. You can do a lot of great things. And then if if you still feel like yes, I know I still you know uh, want to you know work for someone else. Yes, that is always an option. There are always people who are looking for job um, seekers. But then when you can do something for yourself. Uh, I think you should explore that first because once you start uh, your career as working somewhere, then that's that's a chain reaction. It, it goes on; it never ends. Mm -hmm. You keep shifting job to one another, and then so if you want to achieve something, if you want to start something on your own, I think it's the right time to start think in the direction and you know start start. You, you need to have that ideology first in your mind that yes, I need to build something for myself for the community. How do we, you know, so you can probably look for like-minded friends who has the same thought, mm -hmm. you know, who can really help each other in elevating these thoughts. You know, you can even seek help of your your teachers, your lecturers, your friends, you know, you can even find a lot of mentors online. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of platforms. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think, uh, and uh, for job seekers, of course, uh, I think that is even, even, I think Facebook also started Facebook jobs these days. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of, uh, Opportunities. Uh, there will be. A, I think just completely a platform-based kind of. Even you know, uh, there are virtual job fairs are happening, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. I think uh, it's very important. As I said, it's very important that when somebody search your name on a Google search, yeah. are you coming there? <laughs> yeah. No matter which page. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> but are you there? <laughs> so that is what is more important. Yeah. The vector, everything is updated in all your, you know, and also, uh, of course, it is also from going into somebody's profile, you also know that uh, how emotionally stable that person or how good <laughs> that person. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, you get to know in one click of time. So you also, also need to keep in mind that, you know, what you write is everybody reads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah good advice. So, you know, we, we almost come to the close. I just have one more question for you. So, um, what do you think will be the digital future of the tourism industry in, you know, Malaysia and also globally, you know? So, um, the tourism industry, uh, you know, Alia, actually we can't uh, basically judge what you see here uh, at this point of time because it's temporary and we had crisis uh, all through and we can't judge the, an industry by what you see uh, at the lowest bottom so we are in the rock bottom so whatever from here is always only on the top because we are not we are we cannot go anymore down we are only on the down the most rock bottom part so what whatever industry will will be going only towards the up you know so basically i would say that the tourism industry has been always been one of the largest industries in the mm -hmm. world. You know, if you look at other tourism, Australia tourism was one of the largest. It was the largest job providers, you know, revenue creator. So this industry has uh, a lot um, of potential. Only thing is, yes, uh, digitalization is something which has happened, and uh, everyone should understand that this is going in a different direction. Mm -hmm. It was not how it was earlier. So are you prepared? Mm -hmm. So are you prepared for it? That is the question. So when you when you go into work in a company, uh, they will have a different process. They will have a different systems. Uh, how are you familiar with all your platforms? And how updated are you with what is happening around? You know how available uh, online you are, and how you contact yourself, and how do you find customers online? So all these things you also must know. And I, I, no doubt, I mean, I think it will take uh, maybe, as I said, one or two years to come back to what we were, but then it is, it is coming back in a better shape mm -hmm. because now uh, we're going to have more interaction with world markets right? because mm -hmm. everybody is connected online, more connected online, all the suppliers, all the service providers are online, so mm -hmm. it will be more interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah, there's a great way to sum up that, you know, it, it will be more interesting. <laughs> I also predict that tourism industry will be more interesting, more, you know, the uncertainty actually, you know, uh, is a challenge which which we we hope the future, the students, you know, the future students of the new uh, people who are getting into the industry can 
challenge that, can solve problems, you know, that, you know, you and I can't solve before. So I, I, I'm actually looking forward to that. You know. Yeah, definitely. I, say, I mean, I just want to highlight one point here. Uh, any of any of you watching, right, um, who would think uh, that you can uh, create videos of certain tourist places mm -hmm. or you think that you can do a blog, uh, travel blog or you know you can go to a place mm -hmm. uh, you think you can you can write about it and by reading that people will come to visit a place mm -hmm. you can always upload that in thin media mm -hmm. we will find you if it's really because we have a team mm -hmm. who will go through that right and uh, because we we have a session uh, to upload your own blogs yeah. uh, on the media so if you if you find uh, you know because uh, there are a lot of content which if, it's, if you're really good in in this uh, we can create opportunities for you mm -hmm. so if you go to the tin media website tin dot media uh, if you go to the features right uh, there is an option of submit a travel blog mm -hmm. or submit uh, break your own news mm -hmm. or, you know there you can actually or uh, you can also uh, send us uh, by email and you can submit there or whatever so you know it's like we would be also looking forward to opportunities we can create for students, right? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, we would also need earlier your, uh, you know, cooperation. And if you think that something which we can really, you know, the only challenge we have at this point of time is to, to it's very tough to monetize content. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, people not, like it free. There's, there's a there's a thing about digital media. People want it free. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to think uh, how to generate, um, you know, money from that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it, it's basically yes. Uh, there are uh, you know advertising uh, is one way which uh, subsequently come down because the companies are not spending. Mm -hmm. The industry is still. But then, um, you know, good content get tractions. Mm -hmm. So if, that's why if you don't, if you guys don't try, uh, you never know what is your ability. No? So it's very important for you to at least try, try write. You know, if if you are good in in writing in Bahasa, you write in Bahasa. If you are good in writing in uh, English, you write in English. So mm -hmm. it's it's like that. But what you write is it should, it should be full of emotions, and when you read somebody, it should capture attention. You know, it should people should read again, right? You know, they should read again and again and again. Those kind of content is what it works. So that it doesn't happen just like that. It, mm -hmm. it happens a lot of practice. So until you, you know, even even if I, I, even we can help you publish uh, content which you write, if it's really, you know, if you find it like quality content people like to read, we'll help you publish. So those kind of, uh, always we will be there to assist you in that. But we also can give you some guidance on what, you know, if you need any, you know, if, if, you, if you guys need any help uh, in terms of, uh, you know, any, you know, to do a video up or basically, you know, Anything you need me to give feedback, definitely I would be happy to give feedback on that uh, because you know we we know that uh, many times you know people create videos without a uh, head and tail. You know? mm -hmm. They just randomly do stuff without uh, reading about it, without researching about it. So you need to have certain basics uh, in order to you know what is the average watch time, you know. Your more than eight minutes. Mm. Uh, these kids. And so it's, nowadays it's all about short content. You know, it's all about two minutes, three minutes kind of content is what people like to watch. People don't watch thirty minute, twenty five minute kind of videos. So all these trends, uh, it's very important for for us to to understand. Mm. And uh, yeah, so basically. Uh, we also uh, have would like to highlight uh, that we during this COVID, right? Uh, we also have launched a virtual events platform. So it is basically to you know to have to hold virtual events, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like exhibitions, conventions. So we have this virtual event platform. Uh, uh, I would also you know. Uh, the URL for that, you can also have a look at it. Mm -hmm. So, you can see you know different uh, sessions we have. We have uh, that is uh, you know, you see a top tourism Malaysia section, one session for tourism Malaysia news. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, another session for uh, stories, mm -hmm. top news, and uh, 
न्यूज इंटरनेशनल न्यूज वॉइस ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सो वी कवर ऑल दैट बेसिकली Yeah, it's very comprehensive. And, <laughs> yeah. and also, we have uh, we also have partnered with uh, PR Newswire, so we also show their international travel news through PR Newswire. Oh. So on the right uh, below, you can see a session mm-hmm. which we capture from them on the right. Uh, you can see uh, news from PR Newswire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now. All right. So, any questions from uh, students? Because I see that the chat is quite quiet compared to you know the usual. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you guys uh, should uh, ask questions. Yeah. So probably they are shy. So I just share your profile. Uh, you know, uh, I I shared before, but I shared uh, again here. Uh, so you can find peace. Uh, uh, Mr. PC on LinkedIn. This is his profile. You know, yeah. you know, uh, message him. Uh, send friend requests. Like please. Yeah, I I already see. Uh, Rachel already. Uh, this is our students, Rachel. Rachel already. Uh, your mutual connection. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for coming. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah. So, so you know, it's really, uh, that, as I said, you know, it, the first uh, thing I think you know when we are student, right? We are like very, like uh, sort of like very, very you know, camera shy, right? We really don't want to talk. I think, I think you guys are really grown up enough to really go out and talk because you know you have already like graduated, right? Going to graduate. Mm-hmm. So I think it's it's important for you to put yourself up in front of the world so that they can see what you have, right? So don't hold back. Because you only have only have one life, so live it. You know, you have to really, you know, you have to have that kind of uh, aura. People should uh, should like of you know you being around. You know, you need to have that kind of personality. Uh, so it's very important for you to you know uh, to interact. So to talk, you know, to discuss. Even if you need uh, help, you know, you need to ask people. You know, you. Mm-hmm. You can even uh, go to LinkedIn and ask for jobs. No problem. You can even go into go into the companies which you want to work. Just send the message. I want to work. It's okay. Mm-hmm. You know. So you have that opportunity. Earlier we don't we didn't have the opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Uh, so much of uh, now with with what you have uh, the online, we have so much of opportunity. So yeah. 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 I think uh, yeah. Yeah, we have one question. So PC, do you do you use TikTok to promote yourself or your business? And yeah. there's another one. Uh, since uh, you know, what you say that people like to watch shorter content. So do do you do that on TikTok? Yeah. So basically, uh, TikTok is actually a platform which uh, the the if you look at the audience in TikTok is teenagers and that community, you know. Uh, if you look, because every every uh, platform has an audience, uh, you know they they, they say uh, if you look at uh, who consume the content, like for example, uh, as I say, LinkedIn is like more formal crowd, you know. Those mm-hmm. TikTok is basically uh, more of a teenage, uh, you know, uh, the new generation sort of. Uh, Out and th- that that is if so if so I think uh, of course I'm not in TikTok uh, I didn't find relevant uh, to go into TikTok at this point of time but then there are uh, now even TikTok started doing advertising uh, mm-hmm. option so uh, those uh, beauty products you know those stuff you know which if you want to promote uh, TikTok is a perfect uh, medium even uh, even digital uh, service providers are even started promoting TikTok advertisements now. So uh, yes, uh, you and I. You know, if you ask me frankly, uh, TikTok is you can't showcase your talent in TikTok because you are you are singing someone else's song. You are putting up all kind of um, filters, and I, I don't see I don't see that that's a platform where you you can showcase your talent because it's a it's a micro video format, yeah. right? You have thirty seconds and you know. So yeah, I mean, of course, uh, 
the micro video works these days you know uh, people like to keep seeing those shorter videos yes mm -hmm. that is it's an opportunity for people to promote their product well because there are a lot of crowd the young crowds are on tiktok mm -hmm. but then if you really want to showcase what you have probably youtube is one place you can put up your you know your thoughts mm -hmm. you can do a video you know you don't uh, don't worry about uh, the lightings and the most expensive camera setup and all that no just start doing with your phone and, and concentrate on the content mm. i th i think that is what is more um you know um, more important yeah yeah so so we have another... i would i would request all of you to please uh, like uh, team media facebook page right yep. because i if you could like and share you know the team dot media team media, if you just go on google page uh, team, team media facebook Mm -hmm. yeah, please like the page so that you can get updates on um, what's happening, what's happening. around that, you know, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. So, how can we advise third parties such as trip advisor uh, to encourage more people to travel because we have tourism or travel phobia now? So, you know, what what we can do online? So, you see, basically, um, I would say that uh, it's it's all uh, a phobia till you have a medicine and also a vaccine right yes. because once people know that you have a medicine you have vaccines so you don't need to worry about it uh, people will start traveling because traveling is uh, it's, it's in everybody's uh, it's a normal thing i mean it's it's actually everybody wants to travel you know people uh, really want to travel because when one, holidays are a part of life right mm -hmm. uh, no matter what you do you know how big how small you are you still uh, Look for holidays. Few times a year, you will go whether you are going to a nearest place or going to a national destination or somewhere outside the country. Holidays are a part of life, so I think that is never going to change. That is never going to change. Uh, I'm sure that once uh, borders open, uh, people will travel at least twice now because the whole one year of lockdown, you know, they are waiting for to again to travel. Cover up, right? Yeah, they are really like. Uh, so I think I think it is going to have a big Boom! And things. The only thing is, again, it depends on that uh, the vaccine, mm -hmm. the vaccination availability, and also the air connection. You know, the air, the air connection is actually a challenge, uh, mm -hmm. biggest challenge at this point of time. Uh, mm -hmm. Because some countries hold open borders, but others are not ready, mm -hmm. and so those kind of things happening. But then I think um, definitely uh, people would. I mean, I don't, I don't see. Uh, what, because whatever tourism products are also will throw a lot of discounts and they will try their best to attract more tourists and that is going to benefit the tourists actually. Mm -hmm. The traveler will get the benefit of that. When you look at uh, what is happening around, you know, those hotels uh, you're selling for 70% discount, 80% mm -hmm. discount. Right? Mm -hmm. So definitely it's, all, all, uh, it's, it's going to happen worldwide. Right? Mm -hmm. the airlines are going to throw a price down, they're going to have better deal so it is eventually a traveler's market when the border opens travelers going to get benefit of these prices these deals so that themselves is a big encouragement for people to travel mm -hmm. right so they're paying like 50 percent of what they used to pay mm -hmm. definitely they say let's go no? yeah 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 hotel right. for one ringgit who doesn't want it <laughs> so we have right. another question so rachel uh us uh since you, we are talking about LinkedIn, um, she finds it's hard to find uh, jobs advertised from our local companies. So do you have any suggestion where to start? Okay, the first, uh, first thing is, do you have a right profile? Mm -hmm. Is your resume is attractive enough? Mm -hmm. Or is it uh, you, it's just like, you know, a boring resume? You know, more, normally people have the CV, very boring CV, you know, like, uh, you need to have, you need to make it very, uh, you know, it should, it should look very professional, it should look very informative, it should, it should, it should actually resonate the real you in that resume. Because when people read, they know that what is your capability. Now, the second thing is, what is that you want to offer to a company whom you want to be looking for? What kind of, what is that you are offering, right? Uh, what is that, why should they hire you? Mm -hmm. That if they have 10 people, why, what is that in you that nine people doesn't have? So you need to put all that in a, in a, in a, in a piece of paper, in, in your profile, so that when somebody reads it, 
they know that yes, you are the right candidate. So it's basically to to make sure that you have the right profile. You have to profile yourself the right way so that it gets it reaches the recruiter and they get impressed with it. So I think uh, the first the starting the first step is to have the right profile. Just make sure that you you have all the information and also where all you fits in, right? Uh, just don't randomly look for any jobs you get. Mm -hmm. Identify your key areas where you can focus. You think that, okay, this is where I want to build my career. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm good at. This is what I have a bit of experience. So this is what I know how to talk about. So all that, so you need to identify that and you focus on that area. Don't go in randomly to find any job. There's no like that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Rachel, are you okay? We will, uh, the answers, Ali. Uh, who else just asked? Any any more questions? Um, uh, for uh, Mr. PC. Yeah, please. Because I see from Facebook we don't have uh any questions, uh, but uh there are people are watching also on Facebook. Yeah. All right. Okay. No. That's really a nice session so, this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, actually, for you know coming in uh, for this guest lecture. Uh, you know, we we actually have guest lecture program uh, started two years ago. We invite different speakers from the industry um, okay. every semester. Uh, so we, we 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 have we have that uh, you know uh, session so that our students will be more relevant. They can share more experience. Uh, you know, they they, they can um, listen to more experience from people from the industry firsthand. So I think it's great that we do this online because I we don't have to bring you from KL to <laughs> to, to you know to here uh, because last time that's that's um, the reason why it was so difficult for me and for us to get people from the industry. Because we, um, you know, our geography location is not in the center of where the, you know, the bus, the tourism bus is. Yeah. So, but there's a reason why there's a, the tourism program is uh, built here, uh, started here. is because the, uh, you know, we want to have to to bring more tourism to East Coast of Malaysia. That's the reason. That's the reason why. You know, right. so thank you, thank you so much, Ali. Yeah. I think uh, you know, of course, it's uh, the pleasure is mine. I think uh, if I could, you know, uh, share uh, some of my experience with uh, the students, definitely, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something which I really cherish. And I think you know, one thing I want to highlight, especially uh, with this domestic tourism in rise, I think that part of uh, the country is going to boom. You know, if you can see, uh, it's already. You know, more travelers are traveling. You know, people are looking for domestic options, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure there are a lot more, lot bigger opportunities are in tourism at this point of time. Mm -hmm. I think it's the right time for all of you to tap in because mm -hmm. there are people who are looking at new destinations. You know, mm -hmm. new products. Right? There's so many products which were unknown has suddenly pop up after COVID. Mm -hmm. Right, a lot of things, uh, you know. So I think it's very important. All of you, even I, you know, just as a social responsibility, all of you students, you know, just pick up one spot, tourist spot which is near to your house. Mm -hmm. Do a video on that. Yeah. Put it up online. Mm -hmm. At least promote that. I think that is what we need at this point of time, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, all our authorities and all, uh, they are, uh, you know, they will definitely promote the places which has a license and a lot of other. Uh, you know, there, there, there are a lot of other uh, requirement for them to go into the level. But then there are so many places which need exposure. Because mm -hmm. if you need exposure, only you will go into the next level of putting themselves up as a proper destination or a proper attraction. Mm -hmm. So I think we all need to help those uh, places mm -hmm. to promote, mm -hmm. right? And I think we have a free medium available. Put it up on your Facebook or mm -hmm. tag in media, tag everyone around. You know, be. Let, let the world know that there is something like that because if it's, you know, you never know how to spend one or two might pick up, you know, people, you know, so those, those things, I think all of you must must do that. I think there are a lot of beautiful waterfalls and, you know, a lot of uh, such places, right? Uh, a lot of um, small, small islands. Yeah. And, uh, the, yeah. the, the assignment for this semester, what I did with them, 
um, you know, they, they, they actually produce a small, uh, you know, a video uh, which yeah, represent their hometown. So we get very interesting, um, you know, video from uh, Jelly, Pokok Sena, Kinabatangan, Sampurna, you know, and some places that I, I must have even haven't been traveled you know, to that places yet, but very inspirational. So it's a good advice actually. So you can, you know, students, you can upload your video, tag in media, upload on YouTube. Please, I know please, you please. already have your video. So probably, you know, we, we can do this uh, as on digital platform. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Please do that because, uh, you know, we definitely, uh, those places are, are worth visiting. You know, we can always bring even authorities, uh, you know, uh, attention, you know, when, uh, we, we never know, you know, something uh, uh, because there are a lot of places which which needs uh, exposure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, I think if you if you if you are not doing it, then who else will do? You know, because you are from the, that place, and you know that place well better than others who are not there, right? Yeah. yeah. PC, we have uh, you have one more question, PC. Um, so yeah. what's the back? What's the best backup backup plan they should have? Let's say this is the workout. <laughs> Zarif, question from Zarif. Okay, so uh, if you ask me backup plan, so um, it's it's basically uh, you see uh, the thing is if tourism, if you say tourism industry, yes, tourism industry, uh, the opportunities uh, there are still opportunities, right? There are still people are recruiting. Mm -hmm. You know, there is not like, you know, it's completely, uh, yeah, I can see there are still uh, uh, hotels in KL or in hotels in Lankavi and all yeah, the through. Yeah, Cameron High and very busy. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's, it's basically on you that how, what level you want to involve with one industry, right? If it's, quitting is the last option, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. When you say backup plan, backup plan means you are, you are giving up, right? You're giving up about this industry and you're going to another industry. So uh, there are there are so many jobs available, but then if you want to stick to this industry, if you have an interest in this industry, there are still a lot of opportunity. As I said, uh, you know, tourism is the only industry you can start a business without a very big uh, investment, mm -hmm. right? You know, if you if you go into an island like Lankavi or anywhere, you can still see the small shops selling souvenirs and mm -hmm. even the, the food stall. Everybody is making money uh, mm -hmm. and the tourists are the customers and, you know, things like that. And, in, and now if you look at the domestic sectors in Malaysia, the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is packed yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, so there are still uh, amazing opportunities in tourism. Uh, only thing is you need to look for it you need to identify it mm -hmm. i think uh, it is it is not uh, the time to quit because uh, it's basically um people will travel it's not unlike mm -hmm. other industries right mm -hmm. people will travel uh, people mm -hmm. are traveling mm -hmm. right after all this happening still you see mm -hmm. uh, you might get to, uh, find difficult to find rooms in uh, some places in weekends and all that so it's there are still people traveling so mm -hmm. i think it's very important for you to identify what where all you can involve in the industry. So you make a list, make a list of what all you can do in the industry. Mm -hmm. And you try all that. And if all that doesn't work, probably you look for a backup plan. Yeah. But until you don't try all that, you should not look for a backup plan. That means you are quitting without trying, mm -hmm. which is the last thing somebody should do. Right? Yep, good advice. So uh, one more last question. Um, this is last question because it's almost 9.30. Um, um, last question from Ali. Um, so he, he asks, um, do you think event management face-to-face -face event are resilient, um, you know, during pandemic, you know, uh, and how this is going, you know, with face-to-face with -face event? So face-to-face uh, -face events, yes, uh, they they are not uh, going to disappear, right? They're going to come back. They're definitely going to come back uh, like before. Uh, only thing is, it might take some time until the vaccine and all that neighboring countries and mm -hmm. region and all that is cleared with how they're traveling uh, regulations, the quarantine time, you know. A few things which is very important is the quarantine time. Like if you're going to a country, how much quarantine? Or do they need a quarantine or they don't need a quarantine for people who are arriving? Mm -hmm. Number two is, they have, do we have some sort of a, a insurance 
for 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 travelers. You know, if somebody mm-hmm. has any COVID covered incident, then I think everybody will travel without any fear mm-hmm. because we have insurance covered. So there are a lot of planning. Uh, there are a lot of things and planning. I, I'm sure that uh, uh, event. Uh, yes, uh, we we are going to have a lot of hybrid events now. Uh, definitely, which is going to be a mix of face to face as well as the virtual event. Um, Yes, uh, you, we might need to wait another two to three years for those large ticket events. Uh, we might need to wait a bit. But then uh, events, uh, there are already events started happening uh, now in small sizes. It's already started. And uh, it will take some time, but then events will not disappear. Events are going to be like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Even it's it's going to be in a better format. right? So, uh, somebody, so for an event planner, those who are doing events, who only invite people from Malaysia now they can invite people from around the world to their event. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course, the content has to be interesting. So mm-hmm. you have people to pay, pay to watch, you know, pay to attend the events. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So yeah. I think... There's uh, a lot of uh, online event, lot of online concert happening online. We can do the same format to tourism industry. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think, yes. Uh, so uh, the, the message will go out to people mm-hmm. to engage them to travel back to the destination. Mm-hmm. That is how the hybrid events, uh, you know, uh, activity should be. Basically, when, when somebody see online what is happening in this place, and they 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 really, you know, because for them to attend, they take a ten hour flight or five hours flight to come and attend an event for a day, not be possible. Mm-hmm. Then by attending it virtually, they will see that oh, what are the things they can offer, mm-hmm. and they so that entice them to come back and visit. So that is a perfect way of promoting a destination. I think Google Events has huge, huge potential. Okay, thank you very much, uh, PC. So to you know, just to sum up what, what um, you shared uh, of your guest lecture this morning, uh, you know, find your niche. You know, that's the best advice I think. Uh, find your niche. You need to find your niche. You need to know your abilities. Step into that and leverage. Um, you know what what you can do you know follow follow your passion so i i like that and also uh you know create something that you read do something that that you you have your oh, your interest because when you show it meaning people also will like it you know that's that's what i like about uh what what you share today and to bring it in close to bring close to our session Yes, lecture this morning because I don't realize it's already 9.30. Yeah, one and a half hours of uh, great sharing. Uh, thank you for, you know, uh, uh, answering to my invitation, uh, which is I'm uh, also quite surprised. Uh, one thing I, I would like to, uh, you know, add on, yeah, yeah. So, yeah if you have time. Yeah. You know, uh, most of uh, you students, right, uh, mm. we have, when we are when we in our student life, you know, we sort of uh, having a very confused personality about ourselves, right? Sort of like, right? <laughs> yeah, so in, in our twenties, yeah. Yeah, I want to, I want to give you one small advice. Have you all know that there are sixteen type of personalities in the world? So, which personality are you? Do you know that? Yeah. If you do not know. Okay, you Google it. I will send you put sixteen personalities. There will be a website open up to have a self test, right? So do a test. The test will give you a result. It's a free tool. They'll tell you what personality you are. So from there, at least you can start. Okay, I am I am under this personality. This is my because the, the test goes. They will ask you a lot of questions about you know normal yeah, yeah. how you think, how you act in this situation and all that. I'm, I'm sure my, many of you might have heard of this earlier. But then yeah, do this and find out what is that one personality out of sixteen is yours. From there, you can probably open up more ideas about you and you know all that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Alia. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know this. Just you know, discover and also dig deeper. Who, who, who we are. I know twenty. You know, we we are also once um, in our twenty two years old, <laughs> like ages ago. <laughs> but you know, we 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 understand your confusion. But you know, just just dig deeper. Um, you know, try new things. You know, discover more opportunities. Don't. You know, don't be afraid to message people to be people online. <laughs> you know, because I also message a person who you know I didn't know before this. I only see him online. So you you should do that too. You know, take take the opportunity. You know, 
as the worst can happen people say no to you that's all and then you move on to another person yeah so yeah so probably uh you know uh make sure to like uh facebook team media facebook share whatever content that you have you can send your content to team media uh you know website uh join linkedin you know that's the reason why i invite somebody from linkedin uh who are very active so that you know there's another platform for you to use professionally so join linkedin ask friend requests from pc from you know different industry players into uh, in tourism industry you know uh upload your content put yourself out there you know that's that's what we are doing right digital media you 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 have seen me embarrass myself so many times including today <laughs> including today so i hope you you will do the same uh not not about embarrassing yourself but then put yourself out there so so that you you will get to know more people you know so thank you very much PC, for coming in for you know guest lecturing today Probably we can do something with you, MK and Team Media at one point. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Most welcome, Alia. Thank you so much for all of you to, you know, spend time to listen to me, right? And also all your questions. And uh, I wish you guys all the best, right? Uh, the industry is definitely going to come back uh, mm -hmm. much bigger and better. And you all have a very good advantage because that part of the country is booming. Mm -hmm. You all are in a very, very good place. Yeah. Right now, the play now the the second tier, third tier cities are going to catch up in tourism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even even look at the authorities are putting a lot of effort in third coast region to develop. So you all have that advantage. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So should we selfie? Suppose uh, that screenshot? Eh? <laughs> yeah. I, I I I I probably I need to uh, change to a more participants uh, can be screenshot. Okay. All right. Uh, where is it? Okay, print screen. Okay. So thank you very much today, uh, everybody, for joining. All right. Okay. Thanks, okay. Missy. Thanks very much. Uh, thank I can you. see a few of you on on the screen. Um. So I hope uh that you know you enjoy uh the session. You know, although I'm being awkward, Missy. <laughs> So just ignore. <laughs> Don't mind the MV. Okay. Uh, nice, nice, very nice of uh, having you, uh, Ali. I think we we must do. I'm sure you are doing such sessions uh, with more, uh, you know, uh, industry partners so that they get to have more exposure on thoughts and yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You you we hear a lot of thank you voices at the end of your lecture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nah, All right. Thank you, PC, uh, for coming today. So um okay. thank you, Miss. All right.